Today I'd like to talk to you about elastomers and elastomer selection in vibration control mounts. So the question is, why do elastomers make good vibration isolation devices? There are a lot of reasons they do. One is the elastomers are very highly resilient. They have high tensile strength, so you can make them in various sizes and shapes. They have high elongation, up to 800%. Some of the sandwich mounts can stretch in excess of 7-8 inches of shear deflection. They are very impact resistant and can absorb shock and insulate from noise. Easily manufactured in complex geometries from circular one-piece center bonded mounts to two-piece center bonded mounts to round sandwich mounts in various sizes from three-eighths of an inch diameter up to five or six inches in diameter in various thicknesses. They also can be made in a variety of stiffnesses for many different elastomers to give various different performances from very soft to very stiff. They also offer excellent isolation at high frequency vibrations, can absorb shock and insulate from noise and accommodate misalignment between uh, mating surfaces, uh, an engine to a frame, a pump to a frame, etc. What are some of the typical properties for elastomers? First we'll talk about natural rubber. Natural rubber has very low damping, has outstanding durability and outstanding life in mount applications. It's the low cost of all the uh, elastomers we use. Has a useful temperature range from minus 40 to 170 degrees F. And it has very high tensile properties that allow it to deflect and shear strain quite high. Neoprene is another elastomer we use. It has a little more damping than natural rubber. Again, excellent durability. It is slightly more expensive than natural rubber. Has a useful temperature range from minus 30 to 200 degrees F. And it's resistant to petroleum products. That's its key property is its resistance to petroleum. A lot of engine mounts in vehicles and off-highway equipment use neoprene for the oil and grease exposure. Nitrile, as an example, is another elastomer, has low damping, it's less durable. Like neoprene, it is outstanding oil resistance, quite better than the neoprene. Has a useful temperature range from minus 45 to 300 degrees F. So you gain about 100 degrees on the high end of the temperature scale using a nitrile elastomer. Silicone elastomer is something used a lot in the aerospace industry. It has a very wide temperature range, which makes it very useful in aerospace applications. As an example, minus 50 up to 400 degrees F. At that temperature range, the elastomer is very stable and the spring rate is very consistent at the low end as well as the high end. It is oil resistant. It has a wide range of damping from very low to very highly damped. It has low durability. And one of the issues with low durability is you must over design a silicone and it's its last property that makes it hard to use is it's very expensive as it's got some properties that other elastomers don't have. Other elastomers that, that we've used are polyisoprene, polybutadiene, there's urethanes and several others. As I'd mentioned these uh, silicone and natural rubber parts can be made in various shapes and sizes. This is a silicone sandwich mount square um, that's used in an aerospace application. This is a natural rubber part used in industrial. Very similar, very highly damped. Natural rubber, very low damped material. To show you the ability to make some parts in different shapes and sizes, this is a very small center bonded type of mount used in aerospace for an accessory in an aircraft. Okay, again, can be made in different shapes and sizes. Here are two plate forms, uh, 100 series size. Uh, the black rubber is natural rubber and the brown is a silicone. Uh, even though they are dimensionally interchangeable, uh, the silicone is going to have very different performance versus the natural rubber. Again, highly damped, not damped. Okay, here are two grommets. Um, again, one is natural rubber, one is silicone. Uh, going to perform totally different in an application. Again, the brown is the silicone, highly damped. Natural rubber, not very damped. These are two different multiplane parts. 
a natural rubber version, and a silicone version. The silicone is, again, highly damped, and the natural rubber is uh, load damping. It's going to have different performance characteristics due to the damping. I had also mentioned that the rubber can be used to make complex shapes and different sizes. Here is an aerospace application using silicone. As you could see, it's significantly different. It's got a lot of different contours and shapes and uh, it performs differently in its application because of the high damp silicone that's used for one, temperature, and two, resonant control in the application. So why is this critical? Elastomer behaves differently given different requirements. So that's why we ask a lot of questions about the application. Do you have high amplitude and low frequency or do you have low amplitude and high frequency? What, what is your excitation? Is it from an engine, a pump? What are your system requirements? All these come into play when sizing and selecting a different elastomer for a different application to make sure we have the amplitudes and frequencies adequately covered. We also need to look at the chemical uh, resistance that's required, whether it's oil, cleaning fluids, what have you. These all come into play when we're sizing and selecting an elastomer for a given mount to solve an application. 